Today, I want to talk to you about WCAG 2.1, the seventh public working draft. My name is Glenda the Goodwitch Sims, and I am the team accessibility lead at DQ Systems. To let you know, we've actually already made an attempt at recording this, but because the very latest version of WCAG 2.1 was published last week on December 7th, we wanted to do this fresh. So this is our brand new recording, so you get the very latest information. And we will be focusing on low vision and giving you a brief overview of the other topics that we'll be covering in the next sections for cognitive and mobile. Are you ready for a glimpse of the accessibility future? I wanted to talk to you about what was just released in the December 7th version of the WCAG 2.1 working draft. Currently, there are 20 proposed new success criteria. Now, don't worry, this is just a working draft. These are proposed new success criteria. They may not all make it, but let's take a closer look at these 20. Your first question may be, how many level A are there versus double A versus triple A? Well, currently we're seeing six of the new proposed SC at level single A, and nine of the new proposals are at level double A, leaving five of the new proposals at triple A for that total of 20. This could change, but that's what we're seeing right now in this seventh version of the working draft that was released on December 7th. And another interesting way to look at these 20 new proposals is how do they break down amongst the focus areas? In a previous webinar, you heard me discuss that the main areas of focus were low vision, cognitive, and mobile. And we find that four of the new SC are from the needs of low vision. They were written specifically for those needs. And six of them are coming from the cognitive needs. And the remainder, the 10, are for mobile needs. Again, getting us to the 20 new proposed SC. And when I say that, that means that primarily those SC came from those different areas, but it doesn't mean that that's the only disability that it will impact, because as we know, good accessibility actually leads to universal design, design that's best for everyone. So with that overview in place, what I'd like to do now is introduce you to the first group of success criteria based on the needs of people with low vision. There are just four of us that we need to cover, four SC to cover, and I'm going to tell you the name of the SC, and before I give you the formal text of it, I'm going to give you a persona quote. What is it that a person with low vision would say if you don't meet this SC? So the new proposed SC is called Reflow, and it's coming in at a double A recommended. And the first thing that a person with low vision would say to you if your page doesn't have text that reflows properly is horizontal scrolling is absolutely evil. I used to not understand how evil it was until I looked at Dr. Wayne Dick's research on it and actually went through an experiment. So if you want to talk about this more with me, I'd be delighted. But trust me, it is so difficult, the cognitive load, if people are having to read and horizontal scroll. So with that in mind, reflow, the text for this SC might not help you understand horizontal scrolling immediately, but that is the intent for left to right languages. So here's the actual text uh, as it stands today for this proposed SC. Content can be presented at a width equivalent to 320 CSS pixels without loss of information or functionality 
and without requiring scrolling in two dimensions, except if you have parts of the content which require two-dimensional layout for usage or meaning. That's verbose and technically accurate and well-written. Just know that it's trying to prevent horizontal scrolling on left to right or right to left languages. The next one coming in for low vision is one that many people have already been doing out of the goodness of their heart. The name of this proposal is Graphics Contrast. It too is coming in at a recommended double A. And the persona quote for a person with low vision would be, did you actually want me to see that important information in the graphic? Or did you actually want me to see that user interface control? Because the contrast on it is so light that I can't see it. You may know that in WCAG 2.1, there is a requirement for contrast. But if you look closely, it's only for text. So anything that's important that's not text currently in WCAG 2.0 does not have a contrast requirement. This was a gap. To fill that, we have graphics contrast and the requirement as it stands today in the December 7th version of WCAG 2.1 is as follows. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, I'm gonna read a portion of it. The visual presentation of the following have a contrast ratio of at least three to one against adjacent colors, user interface components, and graphical objects where parts of graphics required to understand the content are conveyed to the user. So you may wonder about this three to one. I can talk to you about this in great detail because Alistair Campbell and I were actually the SC manager on this proposal. So I know a little bit about this one. The next SC I want to introduce you to has, is called text spacing and it is coming in at double A for people with low vision. What would a person with low vision say if you're not allowing text spacing? They'd probably say something like this. This text is so hard for me to read. If you just let me adjust the line height and the spacing between paragraphs and the letter spacing and the word spacing, I could actually read this. The requirements as written in this version of WCAG for text spacing are as follows. If the technologies being used allow the user agent to set textile properties, then no loss of content or functionality occurs by setting all of the following and by changing no other style properties. Line height, spacing underneath paragraphs, letter spacing, and word spacing. There are some specific details in there. I'll let you read that in the link to the particular text spacing in WCAG 2.1. And the final low vision SC that's proposed for WCAG 2.1 that's specifically based on a low vision need is content or on hover or focus. It's coming in at a recommended double A. And let me describe the user situation before I read a snippet of the SC text to you. So I want you to imagine that you've magnified your screen and all of a sudden you have a pop-up that's taking up so much of your screen, you can no longer do what you were needing to do. You can't get behind the pop-up, you can't control it because that screen is assuming that you're not at magnification and so it's impossible to use. The same thing might happen when you're trying to use a menu system where at magnification, you can't control things, hover and focus that you could if you were at um, default magnification. So the snippet of this SC text, when pointer hover 
or keyboard focus triggers additional content to become visible, the following are true. That it is dismissible, that it is hoverable, or it is persistent. And I'll let you read about additional details in that. These 4SC and the specific text that you're seeing in the December 7th issue were reached consensus by the current accessibility guidelines working group. The leader on this particular SC, the manager was Stephen Repscher uh, from Boeing. And you can look deeper into this one today. There are also additional understanding documents. So this is the introduction to the four SC that have been specifically put in WCAG 2.1 for low vision related to reflowing text so I don't have to have horizontal scrolling, graphics contrast so I might actually be able to see the control or the important graphical information, text spacing so I can control the spacing around words so a person with low vision can be able to read it, and to be able to control and see and use content that appears on Hover on Focus. In our next episode, Don't Miss, we'll be talking about the new SC that are specifically brought in for people with cognitive disabilities. Looking forward to talking to you about that soon.